So Solo 3.0 has launched this week, and I really wanted to take this video, guys, to just explain Solo 3.0 and give you a breakdown. So first, let's start with the verbs. And I know someone's gonna be like, cross, they're not really verbs, whatever, keywords. It's the main components that you see highlighted throughout your subclass menus. First, you have cure. You are healed in a burst of mending solar light. Second, you have restoration, where you regenerate health and shields over time, and this cannot be interrupted by taking damage. Third, you have radiant, where your weapons are enhanced by the power of the trial and deal increased damage to foes. Now, this is actually a 10% buff inside of PvP and a 25% buff inside of PvE. Next, you have Scorch. The target is singed by destructive solar light, taking damage over time. And Scorch damage increases as the target accumulates more Scorch stacks. And after enough Scorch stacks are applied to the target, they ignite. Now, Scorch will not kill enemies. Their health will stay at a sliver unless the target ignites, which brings us to Ignition. This is actually the large solar explosion that you see us all Always trying to get. This deals damage in an area around the target and it's also a pretty good chunk of damage. There's also an artifact mod that increases both the radius and damage of ignition. We'll be testing that soon. Now moving into the fragments, this is kind of a long list, but since we just went over the keywords just now, I want to just go over the fragments real quick. That way in your head, you can already start visualizing different builds. You have Ember of Ashes, where you apply more Scorch stacks to targets. This actually applies 50% increased Scorch to targets. Ember of Singeing, your class ability recharges faster when you scorch targets. Now, this is kind of a hard one to lock down an exact metric, but if you're constantly scorching enemies, it reduces the regen time by more than half, which is quite a bit. Ember of Benevolence. Applying Restoration, Cure, or Radiant to allies grants increased grenade melee and class ability regeneration for a short duration. Currently, this is disabled. Ember of Beams. Your solar super projectiles have stronger target acquisition. It's got a little more pull. I think it was what? Flame Seeker back inside of Destiny 1 for Hammer Titans? Now, don't expect it to like do a 90 degree curve, but it does have some pull. Ember of Combustion. Final blows with solar supers cause targets to ignite. And again, that ignition is a very nice amount of damage there. You also have Ember of Torches, where power melee attacks against combatants make you and nearby allies radiant. This actually grants radiant for 10 seconds, which is huge, by the way. Ember of Tempering. Solar weapon final blows grants you and allies increased recovery for a short duration. And this actually stacks up to three times. And while Ember of Tempering is active, your weapon have increased airborne effectiveness. Now, this increase in recovery lasts for 8 seconds, and this is approximately plus 20 airborne effectiveness. Now, Ember of Blistering. Defeating targets with solar ignitions grants grenade energy. Now, each ignition is actually about 10-15% to 15 grenade energy. But with certain builds, especially like the Colonel Mustang build we just did, that's not a hard thing to do. Ember of Solace. Radiant and Restoration effects apply to you have increased duration. Now, this is actually a 50% increase in duration, which stacks very nicely. Ember of Eruption. Your solar ignition have increased area of effect. Fellas, are you starting to see it, man? All these ignitions. Like, that's what you want to go for. It's these powerful, explosive ignitions. Ember of Wonder. Rapidly defeating multiple targets with solar ignition grants an orb of power. Now, Ember of Searing. Defeating Scorched targets grants melee energy. This looks to be about a 25% bump there in melee energy. Ember of Char. Your solar ignition spreads Scorch to affected targets. This is still locked behind the dungeon, but it's going to be a nasty one, especially with our most recent build. Ember of Empyrean. Solar weapons or ability final blows extend the duration of restoration and radiant effects applied to you. This one is also locked behind the dungeon. Now, moving into grenades. We actually have some new grenades this season, starting with the healing grenade. It's a grenade that cures allies on impact and creates an orb of benevolent solar light, granting restoration to allies when picked up. Again, keywords, cure and restoration. Second, we have the fusion grenade, which is an explosive grenade that attaches to targets, damaging them and moderately scorching them on detonation. The base scorch from this alone is 40 stacks. Trip mine grenade, an explosive grenade that sticks to surfaces and detonates when targets pass through its laser trigger, dealing damage and moderately scorching them. Base scorch stacks here, 40 stacks. Solar grenade, a grenade that creates a flare of solar light that continuously damages and scorches targets trapped inside. Now, more scorch is applied the longer you stay in the center of the solar grenade, but inside of PvP, this is not enough stacks to cause ignition. Plus, the target dies before full. Granted, maybe if it was like in a rift or something, then you would hit it. But the benefit of solar grenades is, of course, its duration and its AOE effect to apply that scorch widespread. Now, fireball grenades. This is a grenade that unleashes bolts of damaging solar light at nearby targets and slightly scorches them. Now, the base scorch is 20 here, and it hits up to three targets. Incinerate grenades. This is actually the highest scorch stack from all of our grenades. A grenade that explodes in a fiery burst and heavily scorches nearby targets. Base scorch here, 60. Thermite grenades. A grenade that sends forth a burning line of fire, dealing damage 
damage and scorching targets in its path. Base scorch here, 10 per burst. And we also have swarm grenade. A grenade that detonates on impact, releasing multiple drones that seek nearby targets. Each drone slightly scorches affected targets. Honestly, very inconsistent in terms of scorch application. Now we're going to jump into each one of the subclasses themselves, starting with the Titan. First, we have hammer strike. After sprinting for a short time, use his melee ability to swing a blazing hammer that scorches your target and deals damage in a cone behind them. If your target is defeated by hammer strike, they ignite. And this is 150 initial damage to players. Hammer strike range, by the way, is about 10 meters with a base scorch of 40. Now the throwing hammer, throw a hammer from a distance and picking up a thrown hammer fully recharges your melee ability. Now, if the hammer struck a target, picking it up will grant cure. Now to a player, this is about 121 damage. And if the hammer made contact, this grants you one stack of cure. Now roaring flames, final blows with solar abilities or ignition increases damage of your solar abilities. Now this stacks up to three times. For PVE, the first stack is 20%. The second stack is 44%. The third stack is 72% or like 72, 73%. In PVP, you're looking at that first stack being 13%, second stack being 27.69%, and the third stack being 44.29%. And again, Roaring Flames lasts up to 20 seconds. Now, Soul Invictus, Solar Ability Final Blows, Hammer Soul Impacts, and Defeating Scorched Targets create Sunspots. Your abilities regenerate faster and your super drains more slowly while standing in a Sunspot. Sunspots apply Scorch and deal damage to targets inside. And entering a Sunspot applies Restoration. Now, this adds five stacks of Scorch per tick with those sunspots but again you have to have enemies standing in those sunspots in order to get that and you may be thinking like could you pop this on a boss it's gonna be difficult right you'll just get meleeed out of it and you'll get pushed away and of course bosses have a tendency to move the big takeaway for soul invictus if you notice no sun warrior aka no damage buff moving on we have consecration while sliding activate your charge melee ability to launch a wave of solar energy forward damaging a scorching target in front of you as you leap into the air and while you're airborne you activate your charge melee again to then slam to the ground and create a second larger wave of damaging solar energy. Now, if this wave hits a scorched target, they immediately ignite. Now, if you don't finish the attack, half your melee is actually left over. And the max killing distance for this inside of PvP is 20 meters with a scorched stack base of 40. Now, before you jump up and say that's way too powerful, understand guys, a lot of times because the animation takes so long, you can just jump up and completely avoid that slam. Now, moving on to the Hunter, starting with the Golden Gun Deadshot, causing solar ignitions while while your super is active, refunds a golden gun round. And this also states that it benefits from being radiant. Now, I know radiant is supposed to affect just weapon damage, but this also applies to golden gun deadshot. Now, golden gun marksman deals massively increased precision damage, also over penetrates targets and creates orbs of power on precision hits. Benefits from being radiant as well. Now, most supers are the same as before. They've just been given verbs to better describe their abilities. And of course, the benefit there from radiant, of which we will have to test. Now, we also have acrobat dodge. You dodge to perform an acrobatic leap. And upon landing, you make yourself and nearby allies radiant. Essentially, you can do this, grant yourself radiant for 10 seconds, and then open up with one of your supers. Now, the lightweight knife. Quickly throw a knife that deals moderate damage. Precision hits with this knife make you radiant for a short duration. Grants 10 seconds of radiant. You kind of see the theme here, guys, right? Like for the hunter, you see so much, it's tying into radiant there. Now, way to throw a knife is a throwing knife that deals extra precision damage and causes scorched targets to Ignite. Precision final blows with this knife immediately recharge your class ability. Now, any amount of scorch causes targets to ignite. We tested this with like a single shot from Skyburner's Oath. Now, knife trick. Throwing a fan of flaming knives that scorch targets on hit. And this is actually 20 scorch per knife. Gunpowder gamble. Defeating targets with abilities. Solar debuffs or solar weapons to charge up an improvised solar explosive. Now, two stacks for solar weapon kill. Four for ability kills here. And a full six when you use your super. Now, knock them down. Your solar supers are enhanced. Deadshot has increased duration. Marksman has increased damage resistance and duration. And Blade Barrage launches more projectiles. Now, while you are radiant, final blows with your equipped throwing knife fully refunds your melee energy. Now, Marksman damage resistance PvP was actually about 15%. Duration with knock them down is about 15 seconds and 10 seconds for both golden guns. Now, on your mark, states that precision final blows grant you and nearby allies increased weapon handling and reload speed for a short duration. This stacks up to three times and activating your class ability immediately grants maximum stacks of on your mark. Now at max stacks of three, this is approximately 50% increase in reload speed. Now moving on to the Warlock, Phoenix Dive gives cure to nearby allies when landing. Now if you have Heat Rises activated, then you also gain restoration.
duration while diving and you scorch enemies when you land. Now the scorch has a range of about 6 meters with a base scorch stack of 40. Now the incinerator snap. Snap your fingers to create a fan of burning sparks that explodes and scorch targets. Now it's about a base scorch of 10 stacks per spark hit. But of course there's ways in which you can increase those stacks per hit thus granting you that ignition every single time. Igor's dash. Still pretty much the same. Must have heat rises aspect equipped to dash twice. Heat rises. You can fire weapons, melee, and throw grenades while gliding. Consumes your grenade. Final blows while airborne also increase the duration of heat rises and grants melee energy. But like we said in our build video guys, it will grant you melee energy without even you consuming your grenade. Just be airborne. Now the duration increase of heat rises in PvP is 5 seconds, but in PvE it varies based on the enemy you defeat. Examples include Legionnaires, which is like 10 seconds, Stalkers 5 seconds, Raiders 10 seconds, Captains are 7 seconds, and refunds roughly 20% of your melee energy back. Now Touch of Flame. Your healing solar firebolt and fusion grenades have increased functionality. The healing grenade increases the strength of cure and restoration effects, takes cure and restoration effects up two times. Fireball grenades have increased target search radius and a maximum target count increase. So the range bump here is about 9 meters to 13 meters, and the targets that it can hit go up to 5 now, which is up from 3. Solar grenades increases the linger duration. It also periodically emits blobs of lava around its perimeter. Again though, the lava blobs do not scorch targets, just the actual solar grenade itself. Fusion grenades explodes twice. Now from what I'm seeing here, it still only applies a base scorch of 40. Well irradiance, thrust your sword into the ground, damaging and scorching nearby targets. The sword projects a continuous aura, granting restoration and radiant effects to nearby allies, protecting them from the effect of stasis. However, this no longer grants an overshield. It does grant radiant inside the well for the same amount of damage as before at 25%, and the thrusting of the sword applies a scorch of 40 stacks. So guys, that is essentially your solar breakdown. I know we kind of flew through a lot of this. I mainly wanted to get across some of the increases, percentages, these keywords, verbs, scorch stacks, etc., just so you can have a collection here of all of this information. We will be testing things all weekend long, especially with the artifact mods, trying to find ways in which we can reach ignitions faster and get more devastating damage from it. Hopefully this overview though will help you and maybe you can even begin build crafting on your own. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.